This is Duke the Dumpster Drosy, and you are watching In Your Head Radio. All right, now I'm here with Romeo Rosselli here at New England Fan Fest. It's really cool. And you were just inducted in the Hall of Fame last night. I was. I was inducted into the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame class of 2019. Very cool. So what was that moment? What was the moment like when you heard that you'd be inducted in the Hall of Fame? It made me recall basically my whole career because I started in New England in 1999 and now literally 20 years later uh, I'm being inducted into the New, en New England Wrestling Hall of Fame and it really just made me recall everything from the beginning and then when I started to kind of put a speech together I just went through oh wow I forgot about this guy oh yeah and then I did this and then I met this guy and then I worked for this promotion and it's just it was, it was really fun going down memory lane yeah something you talked about the Hall of Fame I didn't know about was you worked for WWE before before you before you well you were an indie wrestler before yeah. you worked at the wrestling yeah. yeah what were you doing so I graduated college I wanted to wrestle for WWE. I wanted to work for WWE. So what's the next closest thing? Work in Titan Towers. Yeah. So I put in a resume to work in the live events department, which is basically in charge of booking the shows. Hey, Charleston, South Carolina, we want WWE to come on June 28th. Is the date available? Yeah, cool, book it, contract, all that stuff. So I was I was helpful uh, in that. I sent in my resume. They called me in for an interview. I I, just, I was happy to get the interview because sure. I was like, I get to go into Titan yeah. Towers. This is awesome. Right. If nothing and, else, like, yeah, yeah. If nothing that's else, story. I got yeah. into Titan <laughs> Towers. But then they like call me and they're like, Yeah, we want to hire you. And I'm like, This is awesome. I get to come to Titan Towers every day, and it was quite the experience. I I, I worked there for about two years, and then I moved to OVW, uh, and then eventually got signed. Yeah. Who was in OVW at the time? Like, it's, uh, in so that that was Eminem, uh -huh. uh, Bobby. Lashley, um, Johnny Jeter, Matt Capitelli, uh, the late Matt Capitelli. Um, who else was there? Who else was there? Uh, Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth. Um, oh, I'm trying to think who else. That's all I can think of at the top of my head right now. No, so maybe a weird question, but since you were in OVW before, you know, now NXT is like a television sure. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. What do you think that? Because now they like really showcase the guys that are already like trained. Yeah. So, what do you think would have been hard as a guy that's not quite to that level training in a promotion like that? Yeah, uh, and that's because a good then you're also being like shown on TV. Right. That's a good question and a good point. I mean, developmental has obviously evolved. Yeah. And I think we would all agree for the better. Yeah. Um, and you know. I have so much respect for those guys in NXT and the athleticism that they have and the stuff that they do. You know, uh, sometimes I look, I'm like, I'm glad I'm not a developmental now because I can't do any of that stuff, even if I tried and practice for five years straight. Um, so, you know, kudos to them for, for, for what they can do. And, and, you know, it's very entertaining the, the show they put on. Yeah. So do you still uh, act? I know you said you're into acting, and, and, and but do you still wrestle at all? Uh, when I get called, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, I, I try to always keep myself in shape. Yeah, I look great. So, so it's not that I have to get get called for a show and then say, oh, yeah, let me get myself in shape. So I'm always in shape. So if anybody calls me tomorrow, you know, I, I'm ready. Um, and and I, still, I still enjoy it. I prefer to do the shows when someone calls me and says, hey, you're going to, you're going to take the pile driver from Waller. Or you're going to, oh, you know, yeah, that's pretty you know cool. those are, especially at this point in my career, like, yeah. I want to do something fun. Like, yeah. I don't want to, I don't necessarily want to do that 25 bit it, you know, sure. you know, a high spot bump match anymore. Yeah. Um, I tried to do that. I did do that. Um, you know, and, and as I get older and now I have a family, um, you know, I want to be able to, you know. How did the heartthrobs come together? Was that your guys' Great right question, there? and that's one thing I forgot okay. to say yesterday. Uh, so, Jim Cornette comes up to me and Antonio, and he goes, Romeo and Antonio, you guys are going to wear big red lips on the front of your tights, a big broken heart on your butt, we're going to put big feather boas on you, you're going to have a black pimp manager called Mo Green, and we're going to call you Mo Green and the Heartbreakers. It's going to be effing great. <laughs> We looked at each other and we said, well, what are we going to argue with Jim Cornette? Right, right. And Jim Cornette knows tag team wrestling. Sure, Jim, let's let's do it. Yeah. We made the best of it. And, you know, to, to our credit, we were one of the hottest acts in, in OVW that have uh, ever come in, in OVW. Not in our words, but th those are words in, in the office. And that's including guys like <laughs> that came before us, like Brock Lesnar, Randy right, Orton. Yeah. 
uh, and those guys, and they said that we we were just as hot as, as anybody at, at our at our peak up there. Yeah. Well, why didn't Mo Green make it to the uh, to the hard throws in WWE? The, great question. So I, they just wanted they just they just wanted the two of us, um, and you know we miss Mo. Mo is a, a big part, and we had a lot of great matches with Eminem, mm -hmm. where Mo Green and Molina would end right. up would end up getting into a scuffle, which was always like the the high point of the match. It'd be a comeback, Bing 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 Bing. Someone breaks it up. Molina comes in. Mo Green comes in. They wrestle around, and then we get to a finish. Um, so yeah, you know we have a lot of a lot of love for Mo Green. Yeah. So you're at the the fan fest. Do you see any guys that you used to wrestle with, or some of the legends you grew up watching, maybe before you became a wrestler and you haven't seen for a while? Yeah, I mean. 80% of, <laughs> right. of everybody here, what, what you just said, yeah. um, and it's still weird to, to say like, wow, I grew up watching this guy in the 80s, yeah. and now I'm just kind of sitting across from him, no big deal, and like 20 years ago, I would have been like, <laughs> dude, that's a honky man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, it's a honky man, yeah, yeah. you know, um, so it's still, it's, still, it's still cool though, and I still love doing stuff like this. Yeah. Are you still a wrestling fan? Yeah, yeah. Once a wrestling fan, always a wrestling fan. And I think I feel like those who say they're not, they're just lying. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, last question: You said you are uh, you got into acting. Any uh, what kind of stuff you do? Well, I had a good role in The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke. Oh yeah. Um, which I still get residual checks from. Oh, well, that's even uh, a better so, role. So that's, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I've done some stuff here and there. I've done some TV stuff on Gotham, on Fox. Oh, nice. I did uh, HBO's The Deuce yeah, uh, with James show. Franco. So, you know, s small roles here and there, speaking roles. Um, and, and it's a fun, fun experience. It's just kind of transitioned me yeah. uh, from, from the wrestling. And, you know, I feel like wrestlers have a leg up on, on the, general actors because right. we have so much more experience yeah. and so many more avenues of entertainment than, than just the Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching.